Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, not too long ago, I posted a video. Uh, I think it was entitled Hugo Culture, No Burn Piles, Old Fences and Forest Debris Making a Hugo Culture Pit. And at that time, I was showing that I was taking down this old uh, cedar fence that's about 18 years old. And there's pressure treated two by fours that are the purlings. Those are the horizontal boards that go alongside of these uh, four by four pressure treated posts. One of the pressure treated posts was bad. Uh, but uh, as time has gone on, one of the things I wanted to do was create a living fence, a hedgerow, and actually have it uh, somewhat of a forested fence, a little bit different. So one of the things I did do after uh, taking the um, all the wood away and burying it and creating a who culture pit so please refer to that video for the details on what that was about I decided to leave the uh, pressure treated post which is uh, a separation on the right side of the screen is my neighbor's property on the left side is is our property and we've been building up the soil on our property as we go downhill <laughs> so that we can capture and keep as much water on our property as well and create more growing areas. So right on the left side of these posts is, uh, are, are many elderberry plants, some fig trees, uh, uh, maple, um, uh, oak, uh, what other trees we have there? Uh, honey locust trees and so on and so one of the things I wanted to do was create a living fence since our uh, cedar fence only lasted about 18 years and so creating a living fence that is also a hedgerow uh, was kind of important to me so right now I'm using a, a heavy-duty persuasive uh, steel bar and pounding rocks into the ground as I'm getting each one of these posts plumb quite an ordeal uh, really windy days uh, recently when I'm doing this work this day was a, was a very hot and humid day as well when I was out here working early in the morning and getting these posts all set so uh, some of my goals with uh, leaving these posts here was to create some sort of a of a of a, um, a landmark structure that I can reference everything from and, uh, and I'll probably be stringing some electric fence wire, not charged, but just to help control the, uh, the growth of the trees in, uh, along the living fence line here. So I'll be planting curly willow trees in between each one of these posts going down the line here. You'll see that in a couple of minutes. And as you can see, the bank raises, you can see it's almost as tall as me down there at the end. At that section, it starts from just a couple of inches deep. I needed to get Elon out here to help me persuade. I had a hard time moving a couple of the posts even after digging out on the other side of the posts. But uh, getting all the posts plumb was the first thing. Stabilizing them by pounding rocks in around the base of the posts as opposed to putting concrete uh, around the base of the posts. And then smoothing out, maintaining the, uh, the slope of the banks and since there is a bank there, we really want to control soil erosion. Uh, so I'll be, be using uh, several layers to try and control the soil so that we don't have erosion of the soil uh, over time. So uh, living fences, often people will use evergreens or they'll use deciduous plants. Seldom will they use both plants together. So here you can see, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you that I've gotten all of these posts pretty much plumb, uh, going down in a nice straight line. So that was the first step, getting all these things straightened up. There are some big bows in some of the uh, these pressure treated posts. Uh, you know, they're, I, they're, I assume that, uh, presume that these are yellow pine that have been pressure treated, and uh, therefore they will twist and bow in different directions as well. But I got the slope um, somewhat smoothed out. I got the, uh, the, the, the deposits that had gone on, that had worked downhill uh, from my demolition onto the neighbor's property, uh, smoothed out and looking good. 
So now it's time to go ahead and use a different uh, wrecking bar to go ahead and pu punch holes in the ground so that I can um, uh, plant some curly willows. But first I've got to go collect some curly willows. Super windy day again. So I went and pruned some of the curly willow trees. Some of these things are over six feet tall. So uh, pruning, it's really important with the, although this time of year in June, here we are in mid-June that I'm doing this project, it's really a, a, a terrible time to do hardwood cuttings. But willows, they, uh, they root so easily that I think that there's a really good chance that I'll have uh, significant success uh, by rooting these but one of the things is getting as much of the the uh, the leaf matter off of them and reducing it down to basically a single stem that I'm going to poke a hole in the ground and you'll see in a couple of minutes I'll use some heavy steel use a heavy steel bar to poke a deep hole in the earth stick the uh, the stick down into the ground and uh, and then try to pack some of the soil around the base of each one of those. So you can see some of these are actually taller than me. I'm just sort of laying them out along the way here first. And my goal is to keep them in the row of the posts that are here. And then there'll be several other layers. It'll almost be like a, a natural forest. So in a natural forest you have uh, you have canopy trees that are there, the really, really high trees that are there, or, or the overstory tree layer. Then you have an understory tree layer. Then you have a shrub layer, a herbaceous layer, a root layer, a ground cover layer, and vine layer. And what I want this to do, this won't necessarily be a decorative uh, form of living fence, and it won't be an evergreen form of living fence, but there's many goals that I want to accomplish. One, I'd like to be able to uh, make it more difficult for, in the future for the deer to get through. My neighbor also has uh, beef cattle, so every once in a while the cattle will get out and all. So it'd be, it'd be one more way of creating an obstacle to deter tr to deter traffic uh, trampling on whatever I'm growing or or consuming whatever I'm growing on the other side of the fence. So hedgerows uh, are, create habitats. So I know I'm talking about living fences, forest layers, and hedgerows. So hedgerows, you know, th th there's a diversity of different plants including trees and shrubs and uh, both woody and not woody layers just like in a in a forest layers but the hedgerow is going to create not just a a a location for uh, for uh, the plant life to grow but habitats for various beneficial insects uh, there'll be poly uh, various uh, plant species that'll bring in beneficial insects. It'll be create habitats and niche niches for various beneficial birds and reptiles as well. So it's all about including all of the diversity uh, on our property to meet the needs of not just the area that we're working. So what you see now is I'm actually going through and, uh, and collecting some of the rootstock from comfrey. So I've talked, made videos about comfrey before. So what I'm doing is I'm digging up some of the comfrey uh, rootstock. I'm cutting off the, uh, the foliage from it so we just have the rootstock itself. And I'm collecting this right now from around the bioremediation canal system. Uh, going to Pond 3. You can see one of the bridges there and the pergolas there in that area. Then I'm going to collect some from around a couple of the apple trees as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and start creating uh, layers of the comfrey uh, roots so that that can uh, help to stabilize the soil so we can prevent soil erosion. That's really important whenever you have banks and the breakdown of all the woody material in the area that the fence that we're that we're creating there. So again, this is a is a living fence that's that uh, where I created a large uh, a large uh, elevation of the of the soil. So you can see down here, it's almost six feet tall. 
the ground level where I've raised it there. I'm the, kneeling on my neighbor's property right here as I'm uh, putting in all this material, but we want to prevent the soil eroding from here. And on the other side of there on our property is a large who culture pit pit where there's trees being buried beneath the level of the soil that I'm at now, about six to eight feet. I've got trees buried underneath that whole area. And so then we have many wood chips and branches that, that have been breaking down over the years. So that bank that you see before me is all decomposing woody material. And yes, that's the area where the nursery has been over the last couple of years and that we've been growing uh, various berry plants and fig trees along in there. And I did a lot of destruction recently because I had to take out this <coughs> man-made fence and want to put in this living fence. But it's really important to control the erosion here as I'm putting in this, this second layer, this, this uh, uh, somewhat herbaceous or ground cover or root zone layer because of these, this comfrey, besides all the permaculture benefits of comfrey, these have really extensive root systems that help to stabilize the soil it has a, a pretty significant foliage that, that will get three growth during a summer season, on a typical summer season, and that will help to shade out weedy material as well as all of the uh, curly willows gradually grow and develop over time. So that's important as well. There'll be other berry plants that we're going to be putting in here as well as in the future. And I'm not sure how I'm going to be pruning these, um, these curly willows. For the most part, what I've done in the past is to treat them as single trunks growing up because of our very high winds that we have here on our property. Um, with the high winds, if we have the uh, curly willows growing up like a bush, that, that makes the main trunks uh, motion and we get snow and ice build up in between the trunks of the trees and there's decay and damage in the future. By planting these curly willows very close together, and by the way, I have started a whole bunch of small curly willows as well in the western garden plot. Uh, so we'll potentially be using those in the future as well. So this is part one of the living fence, the destruction, creating hookah culture pit and uh, showing you a more advanced hookah culture pit that's been covered by, break, uh, by gradually breaking down wood chip layer as well here. And now we're removing the old man-made fence and creating a living fence that's also going to be a hedgerow. Uh, and that's also going to be uh, somewhat of a forested uh, margin zone as well. So I'll explain more as we make progress over time, but this has been a little bit over a week in development. So if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below, and I look forward to sharing more with you as time goes on. Thanks so much, and have a great day. Bye-bye now.